today I have a new video for you showing you my new craft room in my new house. So we've been living here for nearly two years and although my craft room is still a work in progress, I felt like it was time to come on here and share a video about where I am right now. So sit back and I hope that you enjoy this tour. Welcome to my craft room. In this video, I wanna give you a little bit of a detailed tour as to how I have my craft room set up in March of 2022. It is constantly a work in progress as I find new ways to organize and make it more efficient. So a little bit of background. We built this house in 2020 with the idea that this would be a craft room. I have these two windows right here facing out to the front of the house that provide me with a lot of natural light in the morning. And this right here is my main crafting desk. Right here I have my computer area. I have an iMac that I use for the majority of my digital crafting. And I have my most used supplies right here. Of course, I always have a drink handy. I have the word enough right there, which is my one little word for this year. And right here, I have a little bowl with my adhesives and most used basic supplies. I have this little basket, which you can see is kind of a little bit of a mess, with my rolling date stamps and my most used stamps, as well as some stamping blocks, and my black stays on ink. Most of the time when I do stamping, I use stays on ink. And this right here is where I do the majority of my crafting. You can also see that I have a TV up there on the wall that I can use to watch shows. I tend to watch either YouTube videos or TV shows while I craft. I'm a slow, leisurely scrapbooker and I like to have something on in the background. I also have an inspiration board here that I constantly am putting photos and other cute things that I find up on it. Although a lot of those things on there are very outdated. Hanging from it, I have this basket where I have a lot of neutral washi tapes that I tend to pull from pretty regularly. For a while, I wasn't using washi tape at all, but now I tend to use it more often. And I think part of that is because I have it so closely available. This is my cat, Pumpkin, and he's often in here with me when I'm crafting. Right now, he's enjoying some sunshine. My latest addition to my craft room is this shelf right here. That was because my area here started to get a little crowded because I had quite a few things that I wanted to have um, within reach on top of the desk. So I'm gonna take you through everything I have on top of my desk here first, and then we will go through the drawers below. I know the sun might be a little bright, but I really enjoy that morning sunshine. Right here, I have majority of my four by six and six by eight stamps, as well as some three by four ones. Most of my stamps are from Allie Edwards or Studio Calico. Um, also, I have quite a few from Kelly Perky and or, and or Paper Person. And I will be sharing a separate video to give you a little more detail on my stamp organization. So look for that coming soon. Here I have some of my current projects that I am working on. This is my art journal. These together are my five-year journal. This is a personal mini album with stories about myself. This is my second half of my 2021 project life, which I'm still working to fill in. And this is my current project life album for 2022. I keep those right here because they are the projects that I'm working on most frequently. Up on my shelf here, I have a six by eight binder that holds three by four stamps. I have some smaller binders that hold my stamp organization and the ones that are labeled story kits and notes have project planning in them. Then I have a few additional journals here um, of note, this book and the green journal here are part of my one little word pra practice for this year. In this little ba um, box right here, I have some three by four alphabet stamps and then I have some decorative art right here. This box holds bits and pieces that I've collected to potentially put in my art journal. 
This is my planner from last year that sometimes I need to reference for a few things. And then just a few other little books and bits. This is more, you know, non-craft related filing. And then as you can see, I often have little bits and pieces on here that aren't perfectly cleaned up and that's totally fine to me. Up here, I have some additional stamps. And then this is where I have the majority of my stash of three by four and four by six pocket cards. As you know, I do a lot of pocket pages. I also use a lot of pocket cards on my non-pocket page projects. These cards are sorted by various categories and I will do another video sharing a lot more detail how I have my pocket cards stored. In addition to those, I have some specialty type cards up here as well as some pads and other tags and other little things that I might wanna use in my projects. Moving down here, this across here is a Calyx from Ikea. Most of the furniture in this room is from Ikea because it is cheap, sturdy, and easy to store craft project products in. In this first box here, or cubby here, I have my current story kits. Um, just as a note, if you're interested in any of the organizational products that I have, I will try to link things in the description box below. This right here, these are some plastic trays that I use to organize my story kits. This is where I keep my most current story kits or the ones that I'm working through. I limit myself to having five story kits at a time and I label each story kit with the story kit number, the theme, and the date when it came out. You can see here I have a few of the upcoming story kits here ready to add on when those kits come in. But I don't have any space to put one on here. So if a new kit comes in right now, I will either push myself to crush one of these kits, decide that I'm going to put it away for later, or leave the new kit in its package until I'm ready for it. I find that if I have more than five kits to pull from at a time, I get a little overwhelmed and I like to have a limited amount of products in front of me. When I'm ready to work from a story kit, for example, if I'm going to work with the awesome kit, I will pull the tray out just like this and I have it here to pull from. I have other little organizers that I use based on whatever comes in the kit. And you can see I've already started pulling from this kit a bit. And so this is just what is left. I tend to like to do three projects and a project life spread before I call a kit crushed and work the remaining bits into my stash. Some of these kits are in various stages of use. Some of them I have one or two layouts left. Some of them, like the Delight Story Kit, I have not yet touched. In here I have my Misty and my Paper Trimmer because they're easily accessible. Here's where I store the rest of my inks. Although I do like stamping, the majority of the stamping that I do is with black stays on or heat embossing. So I don't use a ton of inks, but this is what I do have and I have them organized in rainbow order. In my stamp binder up there with the two by three stamps, I also have some stamp swatches so that I can look at if I want to find a specific color. Here, this drawer set has a collection of loose embellishments that have been worked into my stash. I try to make sure that I don't have too many embellishments stored in my stash, but as you can see here, I have quite a few. I try to make sure that I don't overflow what fits into these pockets. So if I have a new supply that I want to work into here, I will either try to purge out some of the ones that I have, or I will try to use them. I tend to have things sorted. For example, this is a chipboard level. And then this, some of these have larger um, bins so that I could fit bigger embellishments in them. Finally, right here is where I have my 12 by 12 papers. I don't have a ton of 12 by 12 papers because I tend to scrap a lot of pocket pages. I do some smaller pages or when I am doing a large, a traditional scrapbook page, most of the time I either use a white base or a photo base, but I do have some pages. I have these sorted by colors or types. So these are specialty papers, transparencies, vellums. And then I have a couple here that are sorted by color. Either these are more neutrals 
these are monotone and these ones are more mixtures. I have some six by eight papers in here, white cardstock, colored cardstock. And then down here, I just have a few extras of, you know, favorite ones that I have kept that I want to pull from. And at the bottom, I have grids. So that is what I have on top of my desk so far. The last thing I have on top of my desk is right here. This is where I have my current planners that I tend to have them either stacked here or open, depending on when I'm using them. My sewing machine, which is always set up that I can pull forward to use. And right here, I have a project that I'm currently working on. Sometimes I will store projects out on my desk here as I'm working on them, if they are things I'm working on frequently. But usually I like to put things away so that I have a lot of space. Okay, now let's move into the under desk storage. I have quite a few of these Alex, actually three of these Alex sets of drawers underneath my desk here. And I'm going to show you kind of how I'm using that. So this is one of the areas of my craft room that needs work. But I want to show you where it is right now and the system I've been using because it might work for you. And then you can also see my thoughts and I will definitely post a future video once I have done more organization in here. So on top here, I have this little bit of space between this and my desk, which is perfect to store some additional things. These trays are the packaging that divided page protectors come in from Project Life, those large um, packages of divided page protectors. And I have kept quite a few of these over the years. I have two right here. And on this side, I have a couple right here. These are sturdy trays. They are about a half an inch deep and they are great for storing in progress projects or kits. Currently, what I have here are two of the quarterly scrapbook kits from Allie Edwards. Here is the circle one and here's the rainbow one. And these are ones that I am working through at the moment. And I, once I am done with them, I can put them away. But for now, if I want to pull, work on the rainbow scrapbook kit, for example, I can pull this tray out, put it up on my desk and work on it. And I have the entire kit in here and I have some notes about some ideas for projects. And if I was halfway through a project, it would also be in this tray. The tray fits anything um, like you can tell those are 12 by 12 papers. So I can fit pretty much anything I might be working on inside those trays. So they're great for that. Then let's move into the drawers. So my system has historically been the top three drawers are my most three recent months. So what that means is in here right now I have September and that is because September 2021 is where I am in my 2021 Project Life album. The way that I did this was I would have all of the kits that came in in September in here along with things that coordinated from previous years. So for example, the stories by the month, I have the September 2021 chipboard. I also have the September 2019 chipboard pulled out of my stash so that I could use it in working through my project life. I have some of these divided trays that came from Becky Higgins core kits that I've used to separate the cards I have for the month. I have other little trays for embellishments and then I have this space for larger items. This was the system that was working well for me when in my Project Life album, I was pulling from all of this stuff for the entire month. Starting in 2022, I'm working from a different kit every week. So this system doesn't work as well for me anymore. Here you can see I have October. And then right here, I have November. Once I complete 2021, I plan to use these drawers a little differently. Um, I still have not fully figured that out, but I will probably provide updates on my Instagram stories and again here on YouTube at some point in the future. Next, this drawer is for a larger project that I am currently working on. Right now, I have Day in the Life in here, which is in progress. And then I have a few other things that I use regularly. This is for my five-year journal. And that is for my Project Life 2022 to take photos for my Instagram. 
when it gets to be time to work on Week in Life, for example, that will take over this drawer. Or if I'm working on a travel album, that will take over this drawer. Whichever is more of a focus for me is in there. These bottom two drawers are for embellishments. Down here you can see I have these large trays that are from Ikea and I have separated embellishments by shape. So you can see I have hearts, stars, um, speech bubbles, tags, circles, frames. Those, these are some larger frames and where these story cards and these are squares. And then in this bottom drawer, I have labels, chipboard pieces, flowers, this is, these are travel related ephemera, ampersands, words, and washi tape that is more colorful. I just have the monochrome ones above my desk. And of course, these are those word strips, the, the perforated word strips. And that completes that set of drawers. I'm not gonna show you in this set of drawers because it's mostly office supplies and backups. For example, extras of adhesives. But I'm going to move over to this one on the other side here. So this is my scanner, which I store there. I have to pull it out onto my desk if I want to use it, but I can use that to scan in photos. And then here are some extra of these trays. These ones are messy because I will use these for things like heat embossing or painting to keep the surface of my desk nice. This top drawer is very crowded at the moment. These are kits and stamps that I have purchased that I have not yet worked with or that I have worked with but I have put to the side. So previously for story kits, for example, after I was done with them being in my storage system and I felt like I had crushed the kit, I would work it into my stash. Starting in 2022, I'm keeping my kits together for a while longer. Because they are coming in um, cardboard packaging now, I am using the Alley or the Studio Calico, sorry, um, pouches, which I have acquired quite a few of those over the years, and I'm using those to store these kits. So this is one that I've already completed my three spreads and a Project Life spread, but I'm putting it here to pull out again in the future. I also have some Studio Calico kits and some other story kits that are in that boat, as well as some Studio Calico kits like this one, which I have not yet opened, that just arrived. And I have some stories by the month and other kits that are still kept together. That is a system that I do need to work on. This drawer is for my pens and markers. In addition to scrapbooking, I'm very much into planning and I love fun pens. I often will use some of these, like these Posca paint pens in my scrapbooking, but this is just where I keep them. This drawer is all of my One Little Word supplies. So I had this one separate over here for my longer project trays because One Little Word is an ongoing all the time project and I felt like it needed a location. However, this year I'm doing One Little Word digitally. So most of these supplies aren't really being used for One Little Word anymore. So I need to maybe rethink this storage. This is my scrap drawer. So this is where I put scraps of paper and some of them are from painting, some of them are just pattern paper, just different things that I want to pull from, and I frequently pull from when crafting. So this drawer has some ongoing projects that are put to the side that I'm not really working on right now. Um, for example, here is stuff for a travel album that I put, have all together, but I'm not ready to yet put it together, so it's over here for when I'm ready for it. And then finally, in this bottom drawer here, I have extra organizers and dividers. I will use these when I need to pull something out to organize a new kit. For example, if a new kit comes in that I want to put into a tray and has some small embellishments, I might pull out this little bowl and use that. And I love having all these different organizers in here to pull from. Under my desk here, I have kind of a mess. That's a collection of organizers and stuff that I'm not currently using. And then my typewriter, which is always put, plugged in and I can quickly just put it up on my desk if I want to use it. So that's everything that I have underneath my desk right there. And you can just kind of see, I'm gonna back up slowly so you can see my setup there. Okay, now we're gonna move into some of my other organization. 
I have this rolling cart here and I've had this since in my old house when it made a lot more sense for my setup there because I could not keep everything within reach. Here I don't really need to roll it so much because I can really reach it from my seat. Um, you can tell I need a new chair. That's one of the things that's on my list to upgrade for my room. Um, but I am still using this rolling cart. Uh, I got this from Ikea and I really enjoy it. I have a lot of these wooden boxes that are called Dragon from Ikea also inside of here. And this is where I store the majority of my embellishments. This entire section here are Allie Edwards chipboard. These are from the Stories by the Month and Story Kits. And I keep them in the backer and I label them. So the Stories by the Month are in the front here with the month and the year. And behind that, I have the Story Kits with the kit number, the month, year, and the theme. Once I get it so there's only maybe one or two left, I will punch them out and toss out the chipboard backer. As you can see here, this is really full. So this is getting to be a system that might not be very manageable. Also, recently Allie has changed the chipboard backers that she uses and they no longer the chipboard no longer stays in it. It all just kind of falls out of the backer, which means that this isn't really a viable storage system with the newer kits. So I need to come up with something new going forward. However, I used to punch them out from the backers and I lost track of what I had and I spent so long digging for the perfect sentiment because a lot of the chipboard pieces have very specific sentiments on them so I was never really able to use them. So I'm still thinking about how I want to redo that system and that is part of why I'm keeping the kits together going forward for now. In the back here I have a lot of alpha stickers that are these are like older thickers and those types of things. And these are metallics, whites, and blacks or other neutrals. And then I have some planner stickers here that I use in my scrapbooking and some other larger stickers that um, are from various scrapbooking lines that are just on larger pieces that they don't fit any smaller ones. This right here are all of my smaller stickers. In front of this Dear Lizzie like, thing that I'm using sort of as a divider, these are all my word phrase strips and they're in here organized by color. Behind that, I have a bunch of other stickers. These are generally tried to organize by shape, so like all the circles are together, but you can see I don't really have any dividers in here, which causes a lot of trouble and things get lost, and so this is one thing that I do need to go through and organize. And behind that, I have all of my labels. So these are all my label stickers. I use a ton of label stickers. That's one of my favorite embellishments. So I have quite a few of those. Just as a question to you guys, would you like to see videos of me organizing and figuring out my new systems? Or do you want to just see kind of the finished system? So let me know that in the comments. So this here is where I have all of my puffy embellishments or the types of things that are on backers that would fit in here but are not flat like these. These are flat stickers, these are chipboard, and then these are everything else. So what you can see what I do with these, and these are not really in any order per se. I mean, some of them I might have like multiple, all these enamel dots are together, but they're not really in specific order, but I do label them. And what I do here is I will take this out of the plastic that it comes in, use the backer that it comes with, to label what it is and then staple it to the backer. So the stickers are just out here, so it's much easier to reach them when I wanna use them, but it is still on the backer, so it's a little sturdier. Here I have some larger rolling stamps, and this is a huge rolling date stamp, and this is just a rolling alphabet stamp for specific little words. Moving here into the center. So you can see I'm starting to kind of accumulate some clutter here that needs to be organized, but most of the stuff is still holding the organization system I had from before. So this is more chipboard. This is mostly chipboard that is from other companies like Studio Calico or Allie Edwards ones that are not story kits or stories by the month. These are all alpha stickers. In the front, I have my numbers. And then I have Purely Alphabets, and they are in rainbow order by type. So all of this 
font from Kelly Perky, for example, is all together. Behind that, I have, you know, different fonts. And I have a lot of Kelly Perky and Ali Edwards and Studio Calico in here. This one is a slightly smaller box. And these are just embellishments that are on smaller backers. So there's not as many of those. So they're all kind of mixed and match. You can see here's some chipboard in here. Here's some other like puffy things. But the same idea where I take it out and I staple it to the backer when that makes sense. Here I have some like planner stickers and things, but other things that really need to be organized. In the back, I have a little bucket here that has some tools in it. It's a hole puncher, um, a tiny attacher. Those are some sewing scissors to, sew, to cut fabric. And then behind here, you can't see, but I have some baby wipes and I use those on stamp sets. Then coming down to the bottom here, these are my punches. So I don't really use a lot of punches. The only exception to that are circles. So these are all circles and they're all different sizes. I think here's my largest one, which is a three and a half inch and they go down to a one inch. Here is another little bin that has some alpha stickers, larger stickers, um, and other embellishments that don't really fit anywhere else. The ones that are in pouches are ephemera packs or specific themes from different um, brands that I want to use. So moving right along, over here I have another section of organizers. So these are things that I don't need as frequently because I can't reach them from my desk. Um, some of this stuff is not fully organized, but as I said in the beginning of this video, I'm giving you the unfiltered tour of where my room is now um, before I do some additional organization. So a lot of these things were organized when I first moved in, but they have um, adjusted over time or kind of deteriorated as I accumulated more things. So on the top here is my printer. This is a Canon IP8720. This is a large format printer but I use this for all of my photo printing. Actually, all of my printing is my only printer. And right now I have some photo paper in there. It's the premium luster paper. That is the photo paper. Yeah, pro luster is what it's called from Canon. And that is my favorite photo paper. Moving down here, I have these organizers here that hold the majority of my eight and a half by 11 paper. So I have white cardstock, photo paper, copy paper, a few different colors and types of cardstock. And then I have some specialty ones down here. I have labeled them on the edge here. So you can see the different kinds I have, like printable canvas, um, printable vellum, printable transparency, and those types of things. I do have a few other things in here, like these are some shrinky dinks, um, some other paper samplers, that's that. And then over here, I have my large format paper to print the large 13 by 19 size, which I use if I want to print something 9 by 12 or 12 by 12. Right here, I have another organizer. This has all of my 6 by 6 papers that are organized by color. And here I have some 6 by 8 papers that are just some older ones that I need to go through. And a few other things here, like these are 12 by 12 um, sheets. They're like a thick transparency. And here's some solid colors like craft and grays of 12 by 12 paper. And then here's just some um, extra photo paper. This, These two spots right here I had opened for work related stuff for my job because I was working from home during the pandemic. Now I've transitioned back to the office most of the time. So I only have a little bit of work stuff left here and I need to take it all back into the office eventually. And then I will be able to use those cubbies for more craft related stuff. Down there is some sewing stuff. I haven't really sewed or knitted in a while, but that's what I have down there. And then in these right here, I have some art, painting, and painting stuff from there. I don't even remember what's in here. And this is some cross stitch and other sewing related things. These are, you know, like gesso and gel medium and that type of thing. And then I have these boxes here. This is um, all of my thread for my sewing machine. These are my embossing powders. And here's just some glitters and mists. I don't really use that stuff. These are all of my acrylic paints, some um, paint trays paper towels because you always need those when you're painting and this is just 
I had this on my desk before and I don't really have a good place to put it, but I think it's really cute. Um, these are just some binders from like office type stuff, important papers and that kind of thing. This is my jelly plate, stencils, that type of thing. And then in here I have watercolors, paint brushes, brayer, that type of thing. So a lot of my like mixed media and that type of things over here. Up on top, I just have some books and in that, um, those drawers right there, I have like nail polish and stuff. So not really craft related things. Um, all of these books that you'll see around here, like my red books, are books that I read in 2021. You can see there's a whole bunch over there. Um, I tend to keep all of my books together during the year while I read them. And then at the end of the year, I usually do a scrapbook layout and I just haven't done that for 2021. So they're just still sitting around here and I need to find homes for them elsewhere in the house. So now I'm taking you over to this um, cubby over here. So this is where I keep a lot of my albums that are either in progress or more personal. The more completed or the fully completed albums from most of my projects go out into the living room so people can look at them. The big exception to that is over here across the top. These are my One Little Word albums from 2015 through 2021. 2022, I'm currently working on a digital photo book that will eventually live here with those. Um, I also have a book right there that is just a nonfiction book I want to read. I have some other ones up in here. This bin is what I keep my one little word ongoing stuff in. There are books I want to read. And this was my notebook that I worked from last year. And it's still just living in here. I need to kind of clean this up and come up with a new plan for this year because I'm doing so much of one little word digitally. And then I have a photo wall up here. And my uh, guillotine trimmer is over here that I don't use very frequently. But sometimes you need something a little stronger than this small sliding trimmer I have. These are all my cameras, my Instax printer, um, my GoPro, those types of things. And then moving right along, these are some in-progress albums. So something that you might not necessarily gather from my YouTube channel or my Instagram is that I keep running albums for specific themes in addition to my project life and to my um, other like contained projects like December Daily and One Little Word. These yellow ones are my daughter's albums. So these tell the story of her life from birth through current, and I will probably have to add more albums as I finish them. The blue is my childhood. The pink ones are personal albums about me and stories about myself that are not specifically chronological to my childhood. The gold are relationship ones for me and my husband, and the gray are other stories. So those might be family stories, stories related to my house, my cat, that type of thing. Down here, I have some books. Um, again, those are my 2021 books, but these are just some nonfiction books or other craft-related books. These Allie Edwards ones are books that I had made with all of the handouts from the classrooms from Allie Edwards. Um, I have not made newer ones. This goes through all of these story kits from the very beginning. And then I have some of the older classes on here, but I have not made newer ones because I found that I don't actually pull these out to use them very frequently, but I really should. These have some magazines in them, older magazines, because I do pull those out for craft projects occasionally. And then right here, so these are some albums that are just currently being stored here. So the 2022 part two, that's what I will use when I get there. That starts in July, so it hasn't happened yet. But this is where I store my blank page protectors. So those two have 12 by 12 size divided page protectors, nine by 12, six by eight with the three rings. And these are six by eight with the two rings, which I don't really use anymore, but I still have them. And then over here, I do have some older Project Life core kits that I don't really use, but eventually I would like to work through them either in my projects or through purging my stash. Now, the last place to really show you, well, first you can just see here, I have a nice couch here, a little love seat. I need to do something on the wall, but this love seat right here, typically my cat spends most of his time here when I'm in here. And I will also relax over there sometimes to do um, 
to read or watch TV or just, you know, relax. This over here has kind of like a junk drawer. And then those are some magazines that I need to read. As you can see, I fall behind on reading magazines, which is totally fine. They're, they'll be there when I get to them. Last place is my closet. So one of the things I absolutely love about this room is this huge walk-in closet with these built-in shelves because there's so much storage space in here. Coming in here on the floor first, I have some bins here, the, or bags here, the, these holes, ephemera and stuff that I've collected on trips that I want to scrapbook but have not yet gotten to. And those are more recent ones. Here I have some 12 by 12 papers. Most of them are like solid cardstock uh, for our specific color schemes and some older ones that I like enough to not purge but I still have not used. Over here, this bin is all my December daily stuff. I have not finished my 2021 December daily, so that is all the stuff that I pulled out for 2021 December daily that I'm going to use when I complete the album. Then I have these bins here. These have little bags that hold ephemera that's left over from specific times. So these are years. And there are a few that are specific events. Um, there's one like for my old house, or this is for our wedding. So there's specific events like that that um, I do um, have in those bins. And those are just all the ephemera that hasn't made it into scrapbooks just because I don't want to purge it. And since I have the storage space, I'm happy to keep it. I've got some art paper. And then here's a filing cabinet with some non-craft related stuff. Here's some art my daughter did that I want to work into her album. And then moving through here. So these bins, this has random stuff stored in it right now. But this is my foil quill and other um, silhouette attachments. Up here I have... Um, so this is a cuddle bug, which I don't really use very much, but it's a manual die cutter. Here's my silhouette portrait, which is very old, but I do use it. And then here's some hole punch items. This has all of the die cutting stuff that goes along with this. So all of my dies, I really don't use this. Um, and then there's just a few other random things in there. So moving down here, this bin right here has some vinyl and things to use with the silhouette. And this has a bunch of random found objects that I might want to cut up at some point and use in projects. Okay, continuing right along. These bins down here, this has some larger personal um, like ephemera type things that don't fit into bags or they're just older that or for like my childhood album or my daughter's baby album. This has old planners in it. I keep all of my old planners because in a way they're sort of like a memory keeping and sometimes they have useful information in them. And then this has postcards that I've collected from destinations that I wanted to use for some sort of project but I haven't gotten around to. Moving up, these boxes right here have old photos in them that are film photos. So some of them are from my childhood and some are from my parents, from their childhood or from my grandparents even. And my goal is to digitize all of these and scrapbook them. Scrapbook the digital versions, not the originals, but it's still a work in progress. Up here I have some older albums that are just, you know, from prior relationships and just older points in time that I don't want to have out anywhere, but I don't want to get rid of them. Moving over in the corner, you can see there's stacks of things. A lot of that is just stored stuff that I'm not really using. Some of that is some older embellishments that I do need to go through, but most of it is just stuff that I want stored here rather than in the basement. Moving right along, these are all empty albums that I have that I've picked up at sales or have been sent to me and that I hope to use at some point. This bin right here holds empty smaller albums, like mini albums and that type of thing. These are my completed December daily albums. And then moving right along, here I have all of the pouches and organizers that kits come in. And here I have snacks, envelopes, and my stuff to get ready in the morning because I do like to get ready here um, down in this room. 
These are all of those pamphlet things that come with the story stamps and the Studio Calico stamp subscription, which I had for a period of time. I have kept all of these. I don't know what to do with them. I don't use them. Um, I feel like maybe I should purge them, but I don't know. So let me know if you do have those, what you do with them. Here are supplies for my printer, my silhouette, extra blades and that type of stuff, my typewriter, extra ink. And then down here I have, um, I have a letter board, but it's not on my wall right now, but these are all the letters for that. Extra baby wipes. Here is my embroidery floss that I often will use on scrapbook pages. These are extra inks and older inks that I don't really use. And here's extras of like adhesive and that kind of stuff so I don't run out of that type of stuff. Here I have some older washi tape and back here some masking and just like other tapes like packing tape. Here are some extra page protectors and another scrapbook kit on a tray that I've just moved in here temporarily because I'm not working on. I had too many things to work on. Moving down here, these are some greeting cards. You can see as new things come in, I just kind of put them on top sometimes. So I need to come in here and organize a bit more, but these are cards to send and they are organized by theme. Here are those large word embellishments. A lot of them are from story kits the ones that I haven't used or other just like large embellishments that I get that are too large for my other organization. In the back here, I have these bins. These have more things that are organized by shape. For example, these are all arrows. And these are ones that just don't fit in my organization out in my main craft room. And so I need to come up with a system where I can use these things more regularly. These are all of my ribbons and threads. These are some large alphas and there's more of them in the back there. And then here is my stamp organization. So my stamp organization system involves me cataloging all of my new stamps. So these are newer stamps that I've purchased that I'm working through right now in my stamp organization. So I will take this bin out when I work on it, which is typically when I'm watching TV. And then here's just some backup of, of papers like printer paper and that type of thing. So that is the complete walkthrough of my craft closet. And here's the complete walkthrough of my room. You can see how everything is laid out. There's definitely some mess in here. There are definitely some things that I need to adjust and work through. So I just wanted to share this with you how it is now. So you can get an idea of what my craft room looks like rather than waiting for it to be perfect because that day will never come. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything that I have right now and also what you would like to see. Would you like to see me organize it as I go and figure out a system to make things better? Would you like to see an update after I finish everything? Or just let me know your thoughts. Um, and thank you for being here.